Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a discussion video. My first ever requested discussion. Uh, today we are going to talk about The Last of Us leaks that have recently come out and the impact that they are having on the gaming community. Now, uh, these leaks, uh, supposedly, originally the rumor was that they came from a disgruntled employee, so the initial thought was that it was someone that probably was underpaid or something, overworked, and either out of frustration or whatever, decided to then post the entire plot to The Last of Us 2 on the internet, and along with footage, I might add. So this isn't just a rumor, like, oh, yeah, here's some leaks on Reddit, they might or may not be true. Uh, there was footage, gameplay and cutscenes, so it's all authentic. It, uh, at least as of the February-March build of the game, was the game. So it's, it's real. These leaks are official. And uh, now since then, the story's changed a bit. According to Sony, I believe, came out and said that they were investigating, and it wasn't someone who worked for the company, but an affiliate, and now the story has changed again. They're claiming hackers posted the story. Whatever the case is, uh, I think Nerd Erotic probably made the uh, best logical assumption, which is that it is po possibly a tester. Because uh, Naughty Dog, the developers of The Last of Us, have had issues with testers recently. In the... Uh, when they were developing the previous uh, Nathan Drake game, developing Uncharted 4, they fired one of the game testers who took issue with the fact that Nathan got his ass kicked by a woman and uh, labeled him a misogynist and fired him. So they've had this issue before, and it may be an issue again of a tester who is simply so unhappy with what he saw that he decided to record it and post it on the internet. And, uh... The rest of us having seen it can probably understand why. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to discuss the spoilers in depth. Uh, plenty of other people already have, uh, and the footage is out there if you want to see it. But it's not It's not pretty. It's not pretty at all. <laughs> um, uh, in the basic idea is that uh, some people think it's, it's too far left, and there certainly can be made that argument. That any time you develop a story and you, and you cater to a particular ideology, you risk alienating everyone who doesn't fit into that ideology. So when you put, you know, you work intersectional feminism into the the framework of your games, then anyone who isn't an intersectional feminist is going to be turned off by that. And even on the basic level of making a game specifically for uh, liberals, you're at the minimum alienating half the population. You know, all the conservatives, by default, are going to be uninterested. And from there... If you make a bad game on top of that, specifically a bad story, uh, that's going to resonate very poorly as well. So, The Last of Us has been exposed. Uh, I'm expecting... There's still some support for it, so it's going to make some sales, but I expect it's not going to come anywhere near the sales of the first Last of Us game. Now, um, of course, anyone discussing these, uh, these leaks... Uh, In-depth or not, has been getting copyright struck by a company called Muso, as well as Sony. Now, apparently some people have investigated and found Muso to be a shell corporation. One of those uh, companies with a name and address, but when you go there, there's actually nothing there but an empty office. Um, the main motivation for this, as far as I can tell, is that they have a Gmail account as the main email for the Muso company. So, could very well be a shell account for Sony and or Naughty Dog, who is running around striking everyone, but Sony has actually also been specifically featured copyright striking, anyone talking about it, and getting the videos banned, and getting people getting strikes against their channel, which has kept them from, some people lost their ability to stream, some people nearly had their channel shut down, uh, it's very dangerous, there's a good chance I'll get struck, but since I'm pretty sure my record's clean, and uh, I'm not monetized, so I'm not worried about demonetization, I'm not too worried about it. But I'm not discussing the spoilers in depth partly because of that, and also partly in case someone watching doesn't want them to get spoiled. Now, um, <laughs> so YouTube, all the YouTubers up up in arms now because of all the people that have lost views, lost videos, uh, nearly lost their channels. Some of them have already been overturned, but, um... So there's a lot of clamoring to get support to bring YouTube's attention to the fact that this company is clearly abusing the DMCA copyright claim system, which isn't new. <laughs> and as someone who's dealt with YouTube as well, I can say uh, I'm surprised anyone's getting their videos back already. 
But um, YouTube is very difficult. They're very non-compliant. The fact of the matter is there's no one at the udder steering the ship and uh, the rudder. <laughs> I'm mixing my ships and my cows up. But there's no one at the rudder. No one's got the wheel. It's the algorithms running the show. So there's no one to complain to, no one to deal with it. Um, the best bet would be probably to threaten the company, the owner company. <coughs> sorry. The best bet would probably be to discuss it with the owner company, Google, and threaten a potential lawsuit. But like I said, they're already getting some turn back. People are getting their videos reactivated. So apparently they are working on it. Now, uh, as far as how The Last of Us 2 came to this, uh, the main uh, focus has been on the vice president, uh, something something drunk man. I like to call him Duck Man because I have absolutely no respect for this guy. He idolizes Anita Sarkeesian, who I discussed in my Gamergate video. You can be sure to check the link and check that out if you like. Uh, <laughs> so he is an ideologue, and it's a it's a major focus for him in development. He thinks it's important for games to speak on these issues. Um, and take, you know, be on the right side of history, of course. Now, um, that's a big red flag right there, but to be honest, there's plenty of other ones. Uh, one of the reasons I personally wasn't surprised by this is because, well, a lot of reasons, really. Um, for me, it all kind of starts with when Sony relocated their headquarters to California from Japan. Anytime a big corporation settles in California, it's inevitable that the politics are going to come into it, uh, and you're, you're going to get the uh, the intersectional feminism very strongly. It's it's unavoidable uh, as far as that goes. Right off the bat, Sony started censoring stuff. They censored Devil May Cry, of all things. Devil May Cry 5. You might be wondering, well, I, I watched those videos. I played that game. What, what did they censor? Uh, there's two scenes where the two of the female cast members do appear naked. Now, they are covered in slime, so you don't see anything. But it does show them from behind, and you see their behinds. God forbid you see an ass crack in a video game. So they put a, a light flare, lens flare, to cover up the butt cracks, because we don't want to traumatize people with exposed butt cracks. Uh, it was really lame. Uh, supposedly they walked it off, but I still saw it the last time I played. So I don't know if it was walked back or not. Maybe I just didn't get the timing right. But whatever the case, yeah, the censorship already started, and I've already seen it in a lot of other PlayStation exclusives. A lot of people, they tend to overlook things that are pretty clear red flags. Um, good example, uh, I would tell you to keep an eye on God of War. I think God of War is going to be the next one to, to go this way, because it's already got that set up. It's already uh, emasculated the main character. It's had him focus on being a single mother. Instead of slaying monsters, which was the gameplay focus of previous titles, it wasn't about the the sex mini game and the the topless women. It was about your your fighting bosses made out of mythological figures, which was fun. But that focus is gone now. It's just oh, we you know God of War needed to grow up, and it needs to be about being a father because that's not something you can do in the real world, and everybody should get to be a father. Like oh, whatever. Uh, the second I heard Corey Balrog talking about it, I knew God of War was done. So that's going to be the next one. That's going to be going. To, that's going to go probably full identity politics. Um, I'd also say watch out for the sequel to the Spider-Man game. As excellent as Marvel Spider-Man was, uh, it had those elements in it. It had uh, they forced you to play as <laughs> minority characters that at the time didn't have superpowers. Now I can excuse Miles Morales because he gets superpowers, so it's his origin story, which is fine. But then there's MJ, who has no powers, gets no powers and is an angry feminist. If you go around and explore the environment with her, you get a lot of really interesting uh, tidbits from her. Like, I get the feeling history is just boys playing dress-up kind of stuff, which is uh, <laughs> incredibly sexist. So, hey, if you like misandry, that's fine for you. Good, good for you. But we're forced to play as this character, and we're forced to experience these thoughts as she regurgitates them and overall acts, you know, let's face it, she was kind of bitchy in that game. That's going to be another one, and... Uh, you can already see that as well in the Avengers game, <laughs> which they announced. The first trailer for Avengers I was excited for, the video game for PS4. And then it was revealed the main character is actually the new Ms. Marvel. The, uh, oh, what is she, a non-binary uh, Middle Eastern girl with stretchy powers? I don't know, it's weird. Uh, it's a terrible character, uh, very uninteresting in the comics, and I'm not interested in playing as that girl. 
So, it's another game I'll be passing on. <laughs> you see these things, they, they tend to emerge a lot. And Last of Us kind of had these warning signs as well when you actually look at it. Uh, I mean, the core game, I played The Last of Us for about an hour on PlayStation Now, and uh, it didn't hook me at all. Uh, everyone kept telling me it's the greatest game ever. Right off the bat, I think uh, everyone could admit that The Last of Us is overrated. At the bare minimum, even people that like it will say it's, it's really overplayed. People act like it's the greatest thing ever. I was just watching a review today that was titled How The Last of Us Changed My Life. If that's how you view The Last of Us, you really need to reevaluate your life because that's just pathetic, okay? Um, the Last of Us is definitely overrated. And to be honest, when you break it down, I, don't, I just don't think it's a good game. Naughty Dog, uh, they're not known for their gameplay, really, you know? Uh, even Uncharted which had parts I really liked in Uncharted, but the main focus was on this terrible third-person shooter gameplay where you had to shoot wave after wave of bullet-dancing enemies. You know, they would literally do breakdancing to dodge your bullets. It was crazy. It was ridiculous. And that was the most of the game. I liked the parts where you were solving puzzles and navigating ancient temples and stuff. But the... And then at the end, it always turns into a zombie game. It's weird. But, um, you know, it's... Naughty Dog just aren't known for a solid grasp on gameplay. And whenever someone was trying to sell me on The Last of Us, it was always the story that they so try to sell you. It's, oh, it's the greatest story, it's the most miraculous thing ever, just you, you gotta experience it. Um, and it's my experience that when most people can only sell you like, on a game on its story, it's probably a bad game. And in this case, I do believe it is. As far as the story for the first game goes, I would say it's mediocre at best. The game plays out very much the same as any other zombie game. It's uh, if you've watched The Walking Dead, or if you've played The Walking Dead by Telltale, or any of the Resident Evil games, you've already seen this story. You know, and this is at a time when zombie games were being cranked out like factories. You know, you had uh, you had all kinds of stuff coming out. You had Seven Days, you had uh, Dying Light, you had all these... You had, we just had all these uh, zombie games like Dead Rising... Uh, was it Dead Island or whatever? Blood Tide or that one that's like an RPG-ish? There's zombie games all over the place. And to have another one that basically is the same old plot. It's the grizzly, you know, the uh, grizzled old man, middle-aged man, uh, finds a little girl, you know, working daddy issues. And, uh, and just a random series of events happens. Like, the game is so weird because it doesn't have, like, a track. You know, it's, it's a, a linear single-player game. But it's, it's like a random series of events. Like, you could have randomized that whole game and just come up with, like, 12 scenarios and just executed them randomly. And you would have had the same effect because it didn't matter. The story was just at the beginning and the end. And then it's the middle is just filler, you know? And people like it. Because people have this weird idea that anything character-driven is automatically good. Uh, and I would certainly disagree with this on a fundamental basis. Character development's great, but uh, it doesn't have to come at the exclusion of an actual plot. You know, every story needs a beginning, middle, and end. We need our conflict, our resolution, rising action, falling action, all that stuff to make a story. When you're telling someone a story, you're telling them about something that happened. A thing has to happen. A series of events. And in this case, for so long, nothing happens. It's just these two characters interacting with each other. And... If you're invested in that, then yeah, you can enjoy the story. But if you're not, then there's absolutely nothing here, because the gameplay's not redeeming it, the world building's not redeeming it, the environment's not. It's a pretty game with bad gameplay, and a, a one-dimensional story that hinges on your ability to empathize with these two characters. If you don't care about Joel and Ellie, or Ellie, then it's you're shot in the foot. So right off the bat, it's this weird kind of modern, millennialized storytelling where everything's supposed to be relatable. You know, everybody is supposed to see themselves in these characters, which results in everything getting watered down and oversimplified, and you get these, these cookie-cutter characters in these just random scenarios because there's no story, because that's not what people are told to, to go after. And uh, there's always people that love that stuff. I just don't get it. This story reads like a like if you wrote a story about Jerry Springer, you know, like daytime talk show kind of stuff. And I just don't get where the appeal is for people on that. 
you know, and this is all punctuated by the DLC, okay, there was a story DLC, that was a prelude, basically just put there so that we knew Ellie's gay, okay, I got no problem with gay characters at all, and most people don't, but the only reason for this DLC is because, yo, Ellie gay, and I'm like, yeah, okay, that's great, <laughs> this DLC was made just to pander to specific people, nobody else really cares who Ellie prefers to sleep with, except nutcases, all right? And uh, and this was the tone that was carried into with the sequel. Uh, the main features of the first trailer, released for The Last of Us 2, was A, here's this really manly woman, possibly trans, you know, might get some representation there, plus uh, more Ellie being a lesbian, and having a girlfriend who is apparently pregnant, and, uh, actually, her character model looks uglier than her actual voice actors. Which is weird. It's a weird flex. But, hey, you know, that's just the direction it's going. And when you follow the pattern, it, it all just lines up. Like, this is where they clearly were headed to begin with. And people didn't see it. They didn't want to see the forest for the trees. So they, uh, they got caught off guard. And, you know, like I said, it's going to happen to God of War. It's going to happen to Spider-Man. It's going to be what Avengers turns out to be. This is this is the Sony platform now. This is what Sony wants. This is what they're marketing towards. And nothing's going to change that, okay? Even if the economy gets going again, uh, if companies are forced to reevaluate and rehire and uh, change everything. Whenever I see... I, I mentioned this when I was talking about it with Unknown Worlds, when they fired their sound designer because they found out he posted on Twitter that he identified as an attack helicopter. And that was too offensive, so he had to go. Um, and uh, when I, I, I gave up on Unknown Worlds, and I don't follow them anymore. And I stand by what I say, that when these companies do this, they don't change back. There's no redemption arc. It's just they will die with this ideology. And, and that's unfortunate. But that is the general path that they take. So... <laughs> for me, I mean, I'm kind of glad I never got into it, because I'd be disappointed, but, um, you know, it's easy to see coming, and it's going to be God of War, and the others that I mentioned, and uh, it's time to give up on Sony, I think. I, uh, I almost hate to say it, I've played every Sony system since the original PlayStation, generally avoid, uh, enjoyed them, but um, uh, this is madness, and there's no cure for this, so abandoned ship get with something else get yourself a switch or a pc whatever you gotta do just get off playstation that's my best advice if this stuff bothers you now if it's up your alley enjoy it you and the three other people in the state that, that are also uh, intersectional feminists that enjoy Edith sarkeesian's videos and all that you can enjoy these games they're all yours um but it's not going to make enough money to pay the employees to keep the company afloat, eventually they're going to go under, or at the very least they're going to shut down their gaming division. Which, uh, maybe it's overdue anyway. So, anyways, that has been my video about The Last of Us 2. I uh, didn't care for the first one, <laughs> definitely not interested in the second, and uh, it's just another franchise that's uh, going the way of the Flintstones. Thing of the past. Till next time, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it interesting. Uh, make sure to check out Nerd Roddick's video on it if you want to see more information. He had the pretty most well-compiled uh, sources in his video. So uh, check that out. I'll link that below as well. And until next time, take it easy. Thank you.